Hello guys, welcome to today's episode. My name is Milda and this is Blue Pterodactyl. So today we continue to be talking about Richard Allen and about um, Delphi Murder's case in general. So in this video I have a couple points I would like to cover. So why exactly did the judge quit? Um, quit the case. It's legal to keep all the documents sealed. As we know, we basically can't access anything from the case, any evidence, um, even the probable cause. So is it legal or are they breaking a law? Um, also, I'm going to play a podcast, um, just a couple of minutes of a podcast um, with uh, Richard Allen's arrest straight from the eyes of the neighbors so what they witnessed and how the rest exactly happened um, and also we're gonna discuss why does Richard Allen still doesn't have an attorney and why he didn't accept the public free attorney so we're going to start with judge, previous judge, Judge Dina complaints and why he's not a judge anymore. In my previous video, um, I talked about uh, the new judge um, who she is, so they appointed the special judge for this case. Um, so you can see in my previous video, I was talking about that. Right, so basically what you, at first what you said um, that uh, basically quit because of all the media attention, he was scared uh, of his safety, of his family safety and stuff. Um, however, in this article, we can see uh, that there's a tiny bit more why he um, did a decision that he did. So it says it was initially unclear why the de why he decided to step down. Uh, why can't you see my mouse? There you go. Uh, it was initially unclear why he decided to step down, but his decision followed him voicing frustration to a court spokesperson about all the media and public attention on the case. Okay, so Judge Dina reportedly complained that his court reporter was a brand new hire, that his bailiff answers the phone and has no experience and no knowledge about legal process and that his court administrator had to split her duties with other courts. So it looks like they understaffed how, just like the rest of the world, um, the only thing is, this, what solving these two little girls' murders, this the court shouldn't be understaffed and full of new hires? That is it, Judge Dina wrote. So I am begging for some assistance to shield me, the court, from this storm so that I, the court, can keep running the court. Otherwise, I'll do what? Read to everyone Rule 6A of Indiana Rules of Court, Rules of on Access to Court Records, and explain to everyone that the Supreme Court and statute allow allows for this precise relief. So that's basically um, that's it's um, all of these statements are from his official statement that I, I read and I showed you all in my previous video. I'm gonna put a link up there. Um, yeah so he basically was scared 
All public servants administrating this action do not feel safe and are not protected, so we are scared for his protection, for his safety, his family's safety, and as we can see, uh, it's a bit of a mess happening there. People with no experience answering phones and no, have no legal, um, no legal knowledge at all. So yeah, Benjamin A. Dina recused himself a couple days ago. And that was the reasons. Um, now, as we all know, the documents, um, as we all know, the documents for this case are sealed. We cannot access anything, um, anything true and real. Um, there are some things that leaked. There are some things that people claim are real. There are some witnesses. However, we can't prove any of this. All the legal documents, evidence, probable cause, and all of that stuff are sealed. There's going to be a hearing in end of November, I believe, about um, if they should release the documents. Um, Kelsey German, Libby's sister, um, she has a petition. I'm going to put the link down below in, in the description. She has a petition to keep all these documents closed. And yes, I would like to access everything and I would like to show you guys what we know. I would like to see everything. However, it's been almost six years from the murders. And only now we have something, something that might lead to justice. So if sealing the documents helps even a tiny bit to put Richard Allen and probable um, allies uh, to prison, I support Kelsey German, I support keeping the document sealed and you should too because no matter how much we want to see and we want to know what's happening, it's not about us. It's about Libby and Abby and justice for them. And if keeping this document sealed might help to bring justice to these little girls, I, I, I think there's no even question should, should, should they be keep sealed or not, you know? So that's my opinion. Um, now, is it legal to keep these documents sealed? As we all know, um, Indiana's Open Record Act is that we should be able to access all of the information, um, all of the evidence and stuff. But we can't. Some people are saying, oh my God, they're breaking a law, it's illegal. So I just wanted to show you. Um, so this is the how the law goes. Access to Public Record Act. The Access to Public Record Act, APRA, Indiana Code 514.3, provides that a person has a right to access information regarding the government and the official acts of public officials and employees. The statute also states that government officials have a responsibility to provide that information to you. APRA, so the Access to Public Record Act, covers all public records of a city or county agency, including writings, reports, maps, tape recording and photographs. You can request to view or copy these items at any time so long as these public records are not confidential or otherwise non-disclosable by law. Now, if you would like, I'm not going to go uh, very deep into this because there's a lot of technical and long words, <laughs> law terms and stuff, but if you would like, um, you could see this handbook on Indian public access law. Um, 
and if you just go to this website you will access um, this article now um, agencies have a responsibility to tell you whether the record you requested is disclosable or, or non-disclosable so if you're able to access it or not able to access it um, you have the right to view and copy all disclosable records disclosable you do not have the right to view or copy non-disclosable records an agency must provide a statutory basis when not disclosing all or part of public record to you. Some records are confidential and non-disclosed, including but not limited to. So it says, um, basically, adoption, uh, patient information, medical records and stuff, trade secrets. Other records may be disclosed if an agency exercises its discretion to disclose all or part of public record included but not limited to investigatory records of law enforcement agency materials expressing opinions and use for decision making certain employee personnel file information um so basically it says if the record contains both disclosable and non-disclosable information, um, the city or county agency must separate the disclosable material and make it available to you. This may be done by redacting, blocking out and the non-disclosable information. So basically they do have a right to not show and to seal the documents. um basically if it's if the public knowing the documents would damage the integrity of the investigation or decision oops or decision making um so so yeah so what they're doing is completely legal uh however at the end of november I believe excuse me end of November there is a hearing a court hearing about uh, should the documents be disclosed um, or should they be released to the public uh, however no matter how much I want to see all of these documents and information if it damages the case and investigation I would rather wait wait a tiny bit longer nothing gonna change for us uh, but am I it might do a difference between catching all of the people con that are connected to the murders and not catching them so, so yeah um, now another thing I wanted to show you guys is from the podcast by HLN it's called um, Down the Hill the Delphi Murders um, it's completely free if you just type oh you can't see hang on um, if you There you go. Downthehillpodcast.com. If you guys want to see it, um, or should I say hear it and listen to it, um, you are more than welcome and it's free and it's very easily accessible online. If you just type in Down the Hill Podcast, I will put a link. Um, in the description of this video Hang on. Um, yeah I will put the link in the description of this video and then you guys can easily access it um, there's many episodes However, I just wanted to, sh 
to play this one just a couple minutes of it because it very uh, it has some uh, witness uh, witness statements or comments um the neighbors who basically saw how the arrest happened and how exactly it happened what they what the police did what they digged and what they took from the house and i thought that was that was quite interesting again this is not my podcast this is hl and uh, down the hill the delphi murders podcast and as i said i will put the link down below that you can access and watch it but for now we're just gonna play uh we're just gonna play some of it i thought it's quite interesting shoot me because I would be scarred for the rest of my life like I am. Jackie is talking about the night everything changed. I have had therapy and it still can't take it out of my brain. The James Brown Mystery. You can catch up with the first two episodes now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast app. We don't know how long he's been on the radar of police. We hear that it's been somewhat relatively recent. But there was a search not, not too long ago of his property. There was. There was a search uh, on October 13th. It was a Thursday that started just before noon. And I spoke with several of uh, Richard Allen's neighbors who say that they watched it. It's a very quiet neighborhood. They've never had anything happen in their neighborhood. So when they saw all these what appeared to them to be unmarked police cars arriving and all of these men getting out of the car and going up to Richard's front door. They became suspicious. What's going on over there? What do we need to know? And uh, they watched for the next 12 hours as police uh, approached the door and asked him and his wife to exit their home. They kept them out of the home the entire day. Uh, they said that Richard stood outside his home for several hours. He sat in a vehicle with his wife for several hours. At some point, she left. Uh, they said there wasn't a lot going on. It was more people standing around for the first part of the day. And then as it was starting to get dark, they saw um, Chief Deputy Tony Liggett of the Carroll County Sheriff's Department arrive, and he's somebody that they know, so they recognized him immediately. They said he had a piece of paper in his hand, and he went up to Richard and showed him the piece of paper, and it was right after that they said a tow truck arrived immediately, started loading up his car, the officers who had been there accumulating all day. I just stopped. Um, so the piece of paper that you showed, uh, I'm assuming it was a warrant um, to take his car. Um, that should gonna say in a minute, and basically to do the more extensive search. So the piece of paper, uh, it, it, it was a warrant. entered the house. Some went into the backyard. They started searching around a shed, taking pictures, doing some digging. They used some sort of a device around the shed and in a flower bed that they thought was perhaps a metal detector, could be some sort of a sonar device or whatever to, to get a sense of what might be buried there. They did not dig up the flower bed, but they did dig up two spots near the shed. Uh, they also watched as police brought items out of the house and the husband was watching with binoculars. He said that he saw the, uh, one officer come out with what appeared to be two large bundles of dark colored cloth. He said, I couldn't tell you that it's clothing, but it definitely appeared to be cloth. Dark colored cloth. Now, a tiny bit of speculation. What it could be some clothing from the murder scene. It could be some clothing that belongs to him and that they think might have some DNA or blood or anything on it. Um, it could be... Uh, it, what else it could be? I mean, if they took it with them, it could either be what he was wearing 
and they believe in 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 the day of the murder and he be and they believe um would have some girl's dna or it was some clothing that or some item that belonged to the girls you know Off. There was a Macy's shopping bag, a shoebox, and a stack of books that he said, you know, just look like a, a reasonable stack of thin books, not like a huge stack of large encyclopedias or anything like that. They said that the two areas in the backyard that were dug up were rather small. One was incredibly small. They said that perhaps all that could have come out of that spot was perhaps a bottle cap or something of that size. A bottle cap, a hole in his garden, size of the bottle cap. I don't really have a bottle with me at the moment, but I, I, I'm assuming everyone know what the bottle cap look like, like that. What it could be? Bullets. It could be some old film container you know the um how in the past how you would take pictures with the camera and then you would have the film roll and then you would need to bring it to the um to the shop and then they would make photos for you and then the film would be kept into this little tube it could be that um it could be anything that he allegedly took from the crime scene so any because i know that i know there were some items taken of libyan abbey um i'm not sure what it was but it, it, it could be that um could have been like i don't know that, that's 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 what I could think. Also, the pile of books that they took. Um, they said it was quite thin books. Could could have been notebooks rather than actual books. Could could have been. Okay, let's continue. And uh, they were curious, of course, wondering what is happening with our neighbor's house, our quiet neighbor. They said that he was somebody that they had lived next to for several years, that there was nothing special about him was the, the way they phrased it to me, that he didn't have loud parties, he didn't have people over. They would see him going and coming from work, sitting out in his driveway, having a couple of beers after work and maybe smoking some cigarettes. They had a little more interaction with his wife, but they said they were just very quiet neighbors. And, and after watching that for 12 hours, this is a, a family that, that has children, and they called Tony Liggett and said, hey, you know, we're a little concerned here about what happened, what this is all about. And all that Deputy Liggett would tell them at the time was to stay vigilant, especially with your wife and daughters, which unsettled them. And it wasn't until this past Friday, October 28th, when they saw a news report that there had been a development they know some members of Abby and Libby's families. They called them and were able to, through conversation, make the connection that the family had been alerted to some information that sounded like it matched what they had seen with their neighbor and put two and two together. And they said starting with Wednesday, October 26th, they didn't see anybody in the house. That's apparently the day that he was first detained and... Uh, they're not sure where his wife is, but they haven't seen her at the property. But they said this was just a very normal, quiet family. So one of the things I wanted to point out um, about what you're reporting is that I think throughout the entire work on this case that we've done, we've all envisioned when an arrest is made, kind of a full force, long arm of the law, U.S. Okay, so... 
that basically reports from the um let's come closer um to the um from the, from the neighbors what they saw and and then the they called the sheriff office and they've been told keep your daughters and wives safe and be vigilant imagine if if imagine if if you see that like your neighbor across the street getting arrested and then you call your local sheriff department or whatever and you say oh what happened and then you're like oh just keep your daughter safe keep your wife safe and you're like what you know oh freaking mental guys mental yeah so so that's the thing i wanted you to share to, uh, to share with you i will put a link in my description down below about the oh, where you can access the podcast um i haven't listened all of it however it does look quite interesting so there are many episodes there are so the episode we listen now was the last one because obviously that's that's what we're up to um and yeah so there are there are many episodes about if if you would like to if you would like to um know and listen about how the case uh, proceeded and, and what happened um, you're welcome to do that uh so thank you hln um for that and another thing uh i wanted to mention in this episode the last one why does richard allen still have no attorney so i do have this article that I found um so basically what's happening all of the defendants so all of the people the arrest they have a right to know what the state has against them what evidence they have against them and uh, what they're going to use in court against them and all of this information is given to the attorneys of the defendants however richard allen has none he has no attorney he didn't take the public free attorney cuz he claimed he's going to hire one he hasn't yet meaning he has no information about what they going to use in court against him because it's not going to be given to him uh so i think i'm assuming if when i should say probably he does hire an attorney that attorney gets get, gets all, all of the information evidence and stuff and if he makes an inter he or she if the the attorney makes um an interview and tells what they have cuz i'm assuming they can then we will we 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 will know but also all the allies if there are any no so you know so basically in this article i'm going to just show you wanted to show you um in this article now an initial hearing two days later without the presence of a lawyer moves from the Carroll County Jail to White County Jail to the Indiana Department of Correction for his own safety and the almost unheard of sealing of the probable cause so last last video i said this world what wrong 
I was saying a fit of it. It's oh, what did I? It's affidavit. Affidavit. Hang on. Affidavit. Affidavit. Unheard of sealing of the probable cause affidavit. The tailing the case against Allen could give the defendant's eventual eventual legal counsel an opening to challenge the charges lodged against his client. Right? So the attorney could challenge the charges. However, he has no attorney. So nobody can challenge the charges. This is good for us, you know. Um, not really good for him. Not really smart of him. I don't know why he's waiting. All of that conjunction or combination ex is extremely rare, said Judge. Um, said Judge Dan Hank of Fisher City Court, who is not connected to the case, but served previously as a public defender and a deputy prosecutor. There is a, a constitutional presumption to access to public access to the courts. Um, while the focus this past week had been on the efforts of media outlets to seek the charging information under Indiana's Open Record Act that we talked about and I've showed you early in this video, if you just go back, um, you'll see that. Um, Henke said Allen has a more pressing constitutional right to be fully briefed on delegations that led to his arrest as set out under court rules. Under those rules, it's, pre it's also pretty much called for that, for that those cases get unsealed when the warrant is served and the defendants arrested, said Henke. The post-arrest Sealing of information to a defendant who is already arrested is pretty rare. But if, as a result of his detention without notifying him of the nature of the charges, or him having an attorney, or even being able to argue that could be prevented from getting an attorney, from being moved around so much in communicado, if there was additional evidence that was procured against him subsequent to his arrest, I would see an attorney would, attorney would make a motion to suppress that evidence. He has no attorney? Why does he have no attorney? Um, basically, that's as the judge changed. Um, Alan told Judge Dina that his initial hearing, October 28th, that he intended to hire his own attorney and faces a November 17 deadline to so inform the court. As of today, November 8th, he has 11 days to get an attorney. Does he have money for an attorney? For good attorney to... Um, to... Oh, sorry. Um, to defend him? Does he have money for it? I don't believe so. From what we've seen on Facebook, they don't look really rich. But then they he's not taking the legal counsel. The the, the free attorney, you know. Um it is um it is not uncommon uncommon that an initial hearing that the oh it's not uncommon that at an initial hearing that the first reaction that a defendant might have would be I want to hire an attorney said Henke but given the fact that he's been moved out of the county jail to a couple of different locations indicates he may not have an access to counsel in order to go retain one he may also not have funds 
necessary to retain private counsel because the retainer on this case would probably be quite substantial. I would believe so. No, but imagine being an attorney and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm defending the killer of these two little Delphi girls. And I know it's, it's their job, like that's what they do, but I would charge you a lot of money <laughs> if they would put me through something like that, you know. Um, before bowing out of case, Dina said a November 22nd, there you go. I, I was saying end of November, so it's November 22nd, hearing of whether to unseal the PC against Alan. He has a right to know the nature of the charge against him, said Henke. He has a right to know what the evidence is that's going to be presented or the basis for holding him in detention. Since he does not have an attorney, typically the state is not going to hand over the information to him as a personal defendant. But as soon as he gets an attorney, the first thing the attorney is going to want to know is why are you holding my client? Do you have efficient and enough evidence to hold him? If not, bye bye, my client is leaving the jail, you know? He should get a attorney. <sighs> Judge Henke said Allen and the state also face a 30-day deadline to file a motion to seek a change of venue if either side feels the defendant can't receive a fair trial and potentially faces a biased jury in Carroll County. Because I'm assuming this is because how the how popular the um, the case is and everyone is very involved in it. And obviously, Delphi is a small town, is have a quite close knit community, so maybe, you know, the everyone knows each other. So maybe they could say, "Oh, I can't get the fair trial because everyone's already against me," and blah blah blah, you know. And then you get into a whole bunch of logistical issues as to where does the case go, who hears it, who follows it, the whole the whole host of issues that surround change of venue in a criminal case. Mm. Right, the changing of venue. Such decisions would likely need to be made within a month as Allen's speedy trial rights dictate that he has a pre-trial hearing January 13 and a jury trial March 20 of next year, um, though Henke doubts if that schedule will be maintained. A case of this nature, it would not surprise me that that's not going to be the trial date, especially with the judge changes, because you know they have different schedules, like maybe she's busy on that day. So um, they're saying that it's likely the trial date is going to change. Uh, the defense counsel will need time to prepare, particularly if the state's been preparing its case for some period of time against Mr. Allen. An attorney or attorneys would need time to catch up with that. And there's going to be time needed to determine where the case is going to be tried and things of that nature. Allen is charged with two counts of felony murder in which aggravators could include kidnapping, child molesting or child sex trafficking, factors that could be considered by the Carroll County Prosecutor on whether to pursue the death penalty for the murders of Abby and Libby. Yeah, so. So yeah, no attorney so far. Oh, such a mess, guys. Such a, such a mess. And I feel like, you know, when there are these big cases in the little towns like that, I feel like lots of people and sheriff offices and police and stuff, they have no experience dealing with big cases like that, with like murders and sex, children trafficking and things like that. You know, all the Eustace, like burglars and 
oh, someone robbed my store, oh, drunk driving and stuff, you know? And I think when if if you get a case like that and you're not, you don't, you, you naturally don't have experience. And yeah, I know, like, FBI is involved and there's some other, um, other people from, like, other counties and other big towns, like, helping. However, whew, however, it's, it must be quite stressful, you know, and hard. So, yeah. Um, so that's everything I wanted to show you in today's episode. Um, I will be talking about another set of murders of little kids that the Russian allegations that people are talking that they have might be committed by Richard Allen as well. So he might be serial killer. And you know, I always thought, always thought this weird, you wouldn't do your first murder. You wouldn't choose to do it. Yeah, like it, it's, it was quite quiet. and But it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Like the bridge, it was popular walking, walking uh, trail. And, and two girls, it was two people, teenage girls. It wasn't like small kids as well. Like, and Libby was, she was quite a heavy built girl as well. So they weren't like these tiny skinny two girls. So that you could just pick up, you know, and there are, there, there are houses around and people walking. So I don't know. I just don't think you would choose that for your first murder. However, People think it wasn't the Richard Allen might have not even do a murder. There might be like a ring of people, and he, by saying "all oh, girls down the hill," he might have just been herding them, you know, herding them to others. And they saying the um, what's his name the was Robert Logan the, the person who owned the uh, the land, the property where the girls have been found. Um. He might have been involved, and then obviously King and Klein, um, and stuff. So, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a video about King and Klein, and get into about more about him and his charges and why the charges have been dropped, and Anthony Schott's account and and stuff. The um, the Grey Hughes. Uh, was talking in one of this video about well he was just speculating you know that in 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 the dark web you can buy videos of murders for like how much was it like 20 grand or something you could just buy it and that's why all and all of this child trafficking and stuff um accounts that's why not only Keegan Klein had an access to them but there are many people who had access to them allegedly um, well it's known it I think it has been proven that the, there were at least four people had access to Anton Schott's account uh, but yeah so they were saying oh maybe it wasn't like personal you know to Libby and Abby, it was just they they, they knew because obviously Keegan Klein was talking to Libby night before the murders, so they knew they're coming to the bridge. And um, so the girls went there expecting to meet Anthony, that hot guy, he's obviously not showing up. So they're like, oh, well, might as well go to the bridge. You haven't, because Abby had been, have, hasn't been there yet. So Libby was like, oh, might as well just go. Let's take a picture, blah, blah, blah. It was a nice day. So And then they see the bridge guy coming up. That might be Richard Allen. And, and you know, there are reports and they were saying that Abby was saying, oh, is the, is the Mr. Creepy guy still behind me? and stuff 
but they wouldn't think they, they wouldn't think of anything you know just some creepy guy and then if he had a gun you'd be like okay if if you follow what i say everything gonna be fine down the hill and if you can if if you can um if you look how steep that hill is it's pretty, pretty steep and you know people saying oh there was shoe uh, found abbot's shoe and so it could have been even lost whilst going down the hill or if they were pushed or something but obviously that's all just speculations uh so yeah we'll just need to wait um for more evidence to come um so thank you for watching and as always, if you find this beneficial and if you would like uh, more of my videos, press like button. Um, please subscribe just to reach to reach more people and to get the word out. And I will see you very soon. Um, thank you guys and bye for now.